everyone, my name is Ryan and welcome back to Pro Game of News. Today's video will be about another game that I played online. Um, now unfortunately, uh, again due to COVID, there hasn't been too many international tournaments taking place, so uh, I've been kind of having to uh, go over my own games. Uh, however, if you have a particular game that you like me to go over, uh, be sure to leave it on the comments. Um, I'm sure you guys are probably getting tired of seeing my games by now. The game I will go over today will be a game that I played in the uh, European Professional League has been uh, taking place that's been ongoing and there are typically two games every weekend. So if you're interested, be sure to tune in. It, it's um, every weekend, uh, typically both Saturday and Sunday. There's very interesting games and very interesting commentary on Twitch. So uh, be sure to uh, uh, click the link in the description if you're interested in that. The, day, the game I'll be going over is a game between uh, Pavel Lissi, Tudan Professional, and myself. Uh, this was uh, the first round of the Pro League. So it's a league, which means it's, it's a round robin, and uh, each round is uh, best of three. And then the top players at the end of the league will compete in the finals for uh, the champion spot. Uh, this is the game two between uh, Pavel and I. And in the first game, I managed to sneak in a win. And so we are going to get into game two. Before going into the game, uh, let's look, take a look at my opponent. Pavel Lissi, Tudan professional from Slovakia, is a very inspirational Go player. You can actually read about his story about learning Go and, and uh, how his Go career evolved on his website, which I will uh, put on screen right now. And I'll also link in the description. Now, if you are learning Go and you aspire to become a professional, I would highly encourage you to uh, read up his story, which is not too long, but I uh, really felt touched when I read it myself. Pavel has won over 50 Go tournaments, which is probably as many tournaments I've, I've participated in. Um, he became professional in 2014, won multiple uh, Slovak championships, won multiple U20 European championships, and was third place twice in the Grand Slam and also in the European Professional Championship. Before I get into the game, I'd like to say thanks to Ali and the rest of the EGF pros for inviting me. Uh, although I'm the only lonely Canadian player in the tournament, I'm having a lot of fun each game. And if you haven't already, be sure to uh, tune into the Twitch channel and uh, very fun, very casual commentary. Let's get into this game. So in this game, I was playing black. Um, so we alternate in color. In the first game, I was white. Now I'm taking black. So uh, for those of you who know me, you're probably not very surprised with this opening again. Now I mentioned there are quite fast games. So each game is uh, 10 minutes and 30 second Bio Yomi, three times. So with fast games, typically players like to play things they know. Um, because in a case where you play something that you're not comfortable with, your opponent might know more than you and you could fall into uh, some unknown territory. So uh, here I just did a, uh, an approach. Um, for this one space jump for the faith invasion, um, you could also push. And then white has two options. One is to extend. Um, then black could push and cut. And then white has to connect to protect the corner. Then black has this tsuji. Um, I think it's called a nose tsuji. And then white has to capture the stone. If white extends up, because the corner isn't alive yet, white can't really fight. So white has to go under, capture the stone. And then the next move is, is very big um, to turn. And then black would typically tanuki. In this case, black might um, extend back. So this is one AI joseki kind of with a 3-3 invasion, and the other one is white can also just play the Kozumi, and black would play a knight's move. So both of these are pretty much just like to uh, continue to follow up. Another way for black to play is just to, to Tiniki, because white, uh, eventually, um, if black has the ladder, white would have to protect, because in the case where black has the ladder, black can cut on the inside, and then capture the outside stone. And this is a slightly better va variation for black. So usually if black canukis, white would protect this immediately. 
And the benefit for white to do this is that this shape is slightly better compared to if white played the knight's move and then played another Kasumi up. So uh, this shape that you see on the board right now is slightly worse than the other one, this one. This, this white shape is slightly better. But, I mean, the differences are subtle, so um, I'm not going to spend too much time here. And then I, after invaded white blocks on the bottom, and that's, I think it should be obvious because if white blocks on the other side, uh, black would honey and connect. And I think this would be a, kind of a weird direction for white because facing the right side and all. And the next move is kind of hard to find. Um, maybe white will just defend here. Um, or white might uh, pincer and attack the three stones. I think they're all uh, possible moves. So white blocks on this side, and then we see like pretty much a symmetric shape. So probably this is not the best opening for black because um, notice that so the upper left and the lower right is a symmetric shape. If we compare the upper right and the lower left, it's also pretty much the same. And right now, if white just defends the corner, then we would have a pretty much the symmetric opening. And of course, black has a big Komi burden, so black needs to gain something from that first move advantage, and it's very hard to do that in this case. So yeah, this is probably not the best opening for black, now that I think about it. And then, so here white plays a knight's move. This is a very whole board thinking move, um, because since white has this corner, so sorry, since this black has the upper right corner, if black plays this move, it would expand and a good strategy for white is to not let black have big moils. And that's again with the, with the uh, Komi burden. It's hard for black to gain something without attacking. Um, and yeah, seven and a half points is a lot. So yeah, this is a pretty good strategy. Now, I decided to defend my three stones. Now, I actually kind of regret this move because it's kind of, it's kind of passive. Um, these three stones are not that easy to attack, so this is pretty much just a big move, like, but it's a side extension. And we know from, I guess, general go knowledge that corners are bigger than sides. So just from the feeling that this is not the best move, because it's, it's not going into the corner. So after black extends, of course, white will defend the last corner. And up to this point, it really seems that, you know, black's opening is a little too... It's a little soft, um, and the main reason is because it's pr pretty much playing even moves, um, so it's very hard for black to take advantage uh, of that first move. So at this point, I would probably say the game is already kind of going in white's favor. Um, although it's definitely early to say that, but just from the flow, uh, right now black needs to come up with something. And now, also white's developing something on the left, um, so black needs to do something on the left side. In the game I decided with the shoulder hit, and then white just um, took the extension. So this is a pretty common move to kind of respond to the shoulder hit, because if white extends on either way, black would have a jump. So black can make a light shape easily, and one strategy is to just ignore it. So in this game, white is doing an extension. And if black blocks, it's relatively heavy. So after white pushes up, uh, white can either... Um, I'm not sure if this Kosumi is good, but I kind of want to play it because it... These three stones are really heavy, and pretty much black has to run it out, and it feels kind of strange, not reducing too much territory, but also having a heavy shape. So I would say this is not a very good result for black. And if black pushes on top, then white could simply just pull back. Then, again, this is not really too big if, white, if black just escapes because white has the corner, white has a side extension. So um, white is relatively comfortable on both sides. So after this, um, it's not entirely easy, so I went with this uh, attachment because um, both of these moves, as I played them out, they weren't very good. And so I decided to try and make some 
I guess, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not sure if you call it sabaki, but it's more of a, a probe to see how white will respond. Um, but I realized after that, it's not really a probe because, so, I mean, what is a probe? A probe is a move where you're asking your opponent's response. And the move ask kind of implicitly means that there are more than one response. That means that, you know, there has to be two different responses that are relatively good for white. That is pretty much what a probe really has to offer. But for this move, there's pretty much only one response. So it's not really a good probe. Of course, white would haunt the outside. Um, the outside is really empty. And if white haunt is on the inside, one, that the shape is not as good. Um, like if white defends the corner, then black could just push up. Um, then the shape is much better for black. Um, and if white goes on top, then it would also help black settle on the right side. So it's so it's going to make black settle very easily. So of course white would haunt on the outside because, well, if black lives in the corner, then the, the shoulder hit is a super bad move because it's right next to white's wall. So it's pretty much a wasted move. And we can see for, at this point that... Um, the uh, exchange here. <laughs> what, did I, what did I just do? I think I accidentally uh, changed that into a black step. So I was going to say that this exchange is a very bad exchange for black. Um, so of course black cannot live in the corner. And, and also it's white's turn, so white can just pick uh, a big move to expand this huge moil. Very bad whole board thinking for black to pick this. So not the best probe. Now after this, of course, I can't really, you know, go in the corner, so I had to cut, which I, which is what I did in the game. For this cross cut, a good uh, response for white is just to Atari and block on the outside. This is something you should, might want to remember because uh, in recent times, actually, you see a lot of players make this exchange. This is, for, for this move, black cannot Atari this way. Because after this, if you turn, locally black cannot capture the stone. So black is uh, dead inside the corner. Now there is one exception, is that black can actually Hane and double Hane um, and do this. Um, because this, ex this actually extends a liberty. So now if black blocks here, if white turns, black at Hane, and white cannot reduce the liberty. However, you probably realize that this is a terrible move for the outside. Black, white captures all these stones in Sente and Black lives in Gote. So very uh, bad for the outside. However, if this is all White's territory already, this might be a good option. But I would kind of just wanted to show that, that you know, it's, it's never uh, always going to be... So some variations can, can be good in, in different uh, cases. So after this, um, I mean, so now Black has to sacrifice the corner, so Black Ataris and extends. Pretty much, pretty normal. Um, white takes the territory, Black is able to settle this group. Now what I thought was a mistake is that White actually pushed here. Now this push is not directly Sente, um, and if Black blocks, White would get the peep and White would get Sente. However, if Black ignores, White cannot attach, so white has to extend or wedge. So right now, black can actually treat this relatively lightly, and black could cap. However, when I looked at the uh, review, um, there's really nothing wrong with the push. Because white is attacking the group, and black has to play these moves to uh, settle the group, but also give white more territory in the process. So after this attachment, and extension, white connects, now white has a very solid three big territories. And now it's a relatively difficult game for black. Now I would normally in the pro reviews I would actually uh, ask you for some selections of moves. Now at this point it might be less, um, it might make less sense because I think now there should be one move that's 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 relatively obvious. So if you want, you can pause the video, see if you can find Black's next move. So in in the next move, Black extends here. 
So the the reason why I say this is obvious is because uh, this is the last side, and this this group on the left or in the center here is relatively difficult for white to attack. So playing the next move here would be relatively slow. And if you look at uh, the whole board right now, this is really the only big point. So this is where black play next. After black extended, now the game is relatively calm. And uh, although I said that the game was relatively better for white, because it's difficult for black to use that, one, that first move advantage, so the Komi will be a big burden. However, the game will be still has a long way to go. So there's a lot of things to do. So now it might be a good time to do that comparison. And I would like to get you guys to think about a few things. So where should white play now? Should white play this move? Should white play this move? Should white invade? Or should white do something more fancy, or maybe attack this group. So let me know where you would play at this point. For me, I would personally play this knight move over here, because it, feel, it feels like this not only connects the weak group that's kind of floating in the middle, but also it would pre prevent black from expanding the uh, moyo over here. Now, I think most of these moves would be okay. Now, I, it would be kind of hard to attack, so I'd probably not attack black. Um, I think invasion and also reducing the upper side are also all very big moves, so I think all, all A, B, and C are all uh, okay moves. But just personally, I would play A. So in the game, Pavel played this knight's move. So this reduces the upper side, and this d doesn't allow black to have the ex an expansion on either side of this uh, large knight corner here. In the game I decided to descend to avoid white from gaining from over here and then I decided to play the knight's move to expand and roughly connect my groups as well. And now since the other two are taken there's just one urgent place left which is the invasion and this invasion is actually quite hard to deal with. Now, I thought about this, but it seems like whatever black does is, is pretty easy for white to escape. Now, just thinking about the game afterwards, probably I should have played a move to, to threaten the cut, and that would allow me to indirectly protect this invasion over here. Um, so perhaps this move is not as big as I thought, because black already had a move at Q8, so expanding here is, is not that urgent, I guess, compared to this invasion. So this might also be a slight mistake. Now the AIs are probably saying that Ball White is winning by a lot now because of that Comey thing, and it's, it's not easy for Block to gain a lot on the right side. And the main reason is because White can evade, which is what White did in this game. So of course now White Black has a few options. So you can either descend, protect what you have, let White escape, or you could try to enclose white and gain on the in the middle. So what would you guys pick? Would you descend or Kosumi, let white escape? Or would you try to enclose, let's say a nice move in, in the middle? Um, so let me know what you would play. So maybe I'll label it so it's easier to discuss. Um, so, so we have the knight's move here, we would have a descend, Kosumi, or we would have a knight's move here. Um, I think those are the main options to attack in this case. Uh, also add an attachment E. In this case, um, I think the nice move here would be bad because white be would be able to go under and live relatively easily. For example, um, attach and double Hane. Um, or perhaps even, even simpler. So we'd have to think about um, just knight's move, extend, and then another knight's move and then push up and then live. So here, there's not too much potential in the middle for black because you can imagine if you, well, I mean, so it's actually white's turn. So let's say let's say white has to spend an, an extra move here, um, Hane and connect or something. Now it's difficult for black to attack. If you enclose the middle this way, white can easily get in from the other direction. And if you go that direction, 
the other side is not sealed yet. So if you can seal one side, the other side will have problems. And in, in this case, it's very, very hard for black to gain enough territory to win. So this kind of strategy may not be bad um, in, in different situations, but in this case, I would say enclosing is not the best move. Um, attaching would give a similar result, because if white hawn is, you would have to cut, and then white be able to find some way of uh, making a live on the side. So it would be a similar idea. Now, if you descend or Kosumi, I think that would be a very reasonable strategy. Let's say you descend, white jumps out more. I guess in this case, white would do more than simply jump out. White might attach or find some other way to um, escape more easily. But in, in general, white would just uh, jump out and then black would somehow attack this. So in this case, black would have more secure territory secured and perhaps black can make something out of this attachment and to gain by attack this group. But still, in, in either way, it's difficult for black to gain a lot by attacking this group. But the reason why I like this variation compared to A, A and E is that this variation secures more territory. So I would say this is slightly better. Um, in the game, uh, I didn't know what to do, so I wanted to make a more aggressive move. The meaning of this move is that if white goes under, then I would uh, really try to attack it. So I was thinking if white double honey, uh, I would just capture the stone. So it was my attempt of at being more aggressive, but actually it's not really, it doesn't really work um, because white can also just easily escape. So it's really, I mean, it was maybe, it's, it's, it's a fast game artifact, but it was also kind of showing my <laughs> aggression here and try to make the game more complicated in starting the fight here. White attached and made a tiger's mouth. I think this is, has to do with Pavel's uh, style. Now, if you've seen Pavel's games before and you're familiar with Pavel, he's a very aggressive player. And uh, so he's known as Cheater on KGS. And if you look at his games, um, he plays a lot of Blitz games um, as well. And yeah, all of, all of the games I have against him on KGS are all super intensive fighting, um, 350 move plus games <laughs> um, are uh, pretty common. So this is a way for White to, you know, fight. And which is a reasonable strategy in this case because it's, it also makes relatively light shape and it's hard for black to attack. Now, this extension is a super important move. Without this move, if black extends on the other side, after white hanes, black would have to connect the ko because if white captures, it would be a lot difficult, it would be a lot more difficult for black to attack the white group because in all cases, white will have a ko option. So you can imagine all the moves on the outside would be ko threats because it's a very light ko for white so white can easily make this group alive. And if white can make this group alive, white is also playing inside what black's moil, so it will be very difficult for black. So this extension move is very important. And then white captured. So this is also going with, uh, with the same idea. And so if black tries to cap attack white, white can start the co and use co threats for escaping. So here in this game, white played a very ni nice combo. So white jumped first. If white starts the cone now, black will capture. If white jumps out, black would protect the co, and now white has to fix the cut. And even though white escaped, but this whole group is relatively weak, and black could also use the potential cutting point over here to benefit from attacking. Not to mention black gained on the right side. So this would be a, too simple for white. Now what white did in the game was white pushed, white uh, jumped first. So in this case, if black protects the ko, then white would not make the exchange with S10 and R11. So in the game, I push, and I think this was a mistake because after white starts the ko, now when white pushes through, if black connects, then white would have way more better shape. And also this after this exchange, the three black stones are now short on liberty, so if white gets 0-14, that, that would make it very difficult for black to attack this group. 
So this would make this group much stronger. And I didn't really want that, and I really had to cut. So, but after white capture, now the next co-threat is extremely difficult. Because now if I... So, so one, I can't descend. Because if I descend, white will Atari. If black captures, white has a very easy co-threat. And then when white captures back, black is in huge trouble. So make sure you don't play these local co-threats, because this one loses... This one makes the co heavier on black. So really make sure you don't play uh, this kind of co-threat. It's a very dangerous local co-threat. Um, so in this case, uh, black has to find a co-threat. Now, for the strong players might be wondering, well, can black play a block here? Uh, this looks kind of strange. It's not really a co-threat. Um, but so this prevents white from attarring on in the middle here because when white and when black captures, it is also an Atari. However, black can capture, and I was worried that this isn't a really a good result because if, even if black can extend, white can just make this group alive. And there's just too much Aji in the middle, and white gained too much territory on the right side. White can also jump in in the future, so black doesn't have enough territory, I think. Um, and also, there's that weakness in the center, so I didn't really like this result, and so I didn't play this push. Um, in the game, I decided to find a co-threat. Uh, I was a little pressed on time in this case. Um, I wasn't sure whether I should push through at P3 or push through at F3. Now, um, looking after the game, I should probably just find this other co-threat. Um, because here, after pushing through, the two stones are weaker. So it's at least it's pretty much Ascente. And it pretty much captures the corner, so it's a bigger territory move. In the game, I find I found the other co-threat, which is actually a smaller co-threat. Because, uh, so here, white would definitely finish the co-off. And now, pushing through is, is, is Gote, which is a huge problem, because it doesn't really even have a follow-up. So this was such a small co-threat. And after white captures this, white just got so much on the right side destroyed Black's territory on the right and even though Black pushed through it's a relatively small profit compared to the right side. So at this point White is extremely happy. After Black turns and a few exchanges Black really needs to try and make something out of the center influence. So this Knight's move was very big because it uh, encloses this so it activates some potential in the center. So White extends to reduce the moil and uh, yeah right now we can see how much territory white has so at this point I won't even count because I think it's relatively obvious that um, white has just has more territory so really black needs to get something in the game I decided to attach um, to attack the stone and after pushing white I did find a mistake now this was a mistake because after black extends, it's difficult for white to find a move to connect back. And um, what, I think what white should have played is white should have just simply jumped. If, white, if black pushes, then white could Hane. And I don't know about pushing, but white could uh, even just make a tiger's mouth to protect the cut. So even though black can gain some territory, but... Black also loses potential in the center. Um, even though there's a push and cut here, but it's not as fear right now, White can easily make this group alive. The difference from the game is that when White played this two space jump, after White extends, Black can jump out. So now White is forced to push and cut, but after you can see that this, this cut is much more severe, and White's shape is much worse compared to earlier. And now White is forced to make a knight's move, right when black has a big chance, I made another <laughs> very big mistake. Now, this is not really a reading mistake, it's more of a judgment mistake. Um, so, I think most of you right now would probably play this Atari and connect. <clears throat> and this would be the correct move. In the game, I played the other Atari thinking that this leaves more weaknesses for white in the middle. And that is true. 
Black will be able to capture more stones. But I neglect the simple fact that these stones are not as big. The, the more important thing is White's group in the middle right now. And how badly Black can attack it or even try to kill it. But in this case, after this move, White has so much more Aji, so that would help White's group so much. So in the end, just gaining some stones, which are not even important anymore, is not enough for Black. So this is a big mistake, and it's more of a judgment error. And this mistake, I believe, cost me the game. So here, White just jumps out, and now Black has, is relatively weak, so Black actually has to spend another move over here. So I had to extend and given my previous strategy I didn't want to exchange anything here. So um, I had to spend another move here which let white get this extension move which now is pretty odd. It's now it's pretty easy easy for white to live. Um, even though black can play a nice move to keep attacking but white can also uh, squeeze black and then come back. And after this, the center is very strong. And all Black gain really are these stones, which are not even important stones, they're just a few points. So after this, the game became much, much better for White. And also Black has to worry a little bit about his own shape because, well, if I capture this now, if White plays Knight's move, this is actually quite weak. So if Black gets attacked here, Black's gonna have nothing. So now I had to keep my group strong and really I just didn't have enough moves because it's just all these groups have you know weaknesses and so here Pavel actually even connected his stone back so all I really got was the two stones which is four points so all my effort here was just so I mean it, it really didn't make sense and my judgment issue um, I didn't realize that White's stones, all these stones are relatively light, so White didn't have to care about them, so White can finish protecting this group first and then come back later. And in the end, Black gained 4 points, let White live, and all the potential in the center was removed. At this point, the game became really, really hard for Black. So even though Black can gain a little bit in the center, but White can simply just connect back, and at this point, it's very, very hard to gain it back anymore. Just because, well, all the territory is set. There's no more weak groups, so it's just simple uh, finishing the game towards the end. And also, Whitewood is able to even capture um, the stones in the center. So later on, I continue the game. Uh, it's, it's a fast game, and it's, it's not too... Uh, it's actually relatively close. It's not too much in White's favor. But um, just White Black, um, I guess in the end Black wasn't able to gain enough from attacking. So yeah, in the end um, the game was close and I don't think I'm going to talk too much about the end game. It was pr relatively even. So I think I'm going to end my analysis here. I also made a big mistake here later. Um, I should have turned first which is the difference of Senti and Gote. So that could have been a relatively big difference, but then I played out the game and it didn't really affect the final result. So um, in, the, in the end, I lost by two and a half points. Now, this was the second game. So um, after this game, there was a tiebreaker. So it was, it, this is best uh, two out of three. So after this game, we were back to square one. And uh, we fought it out in game three, which is also, well, it's, it was a very interesting game as well. So after the end game, Black had two points. Uh, Black was ahead by two points on the board, so White wins by four and a half points. And uh, here we got to the end. Now, to summarize this game, I think in the opening, it wasn't very good for Black. Now, when you play an opening that you're not really ahead in, you have to try to gain something back quickly because the pressure is really on you. And for these high-level games, 
it's very hard to gain something back when you're behind. So I would say my moves are really passive, especially Q8. Um, that was very passive. So later on, when white invaded, I had to play more aggressively, which led, um, which had uh, errors, and white caught my mistakes, and so white was able to expand the lead, even though I had a chance um, in the middle to fight back, but I wasn't able to clutch the chance, so white was able to uh, continue the lead towards the end. So. Not every day that um, I get to play a relatively calm game against Pavel. I mean, there was a pretty big fight in the middle, but you can... I would say this is a very calm game, considering the games that we usually have. That about sums up the pro commentary today. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate if you can leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment, and I will try to get back to you on that. Ryan here, I will see you on Friday in the next random opening.